The Bible tells us that every day yes. his blessings are renewed. Yes. That he pours them out upon us yes. in ways in which we're not aware of. Come on, young man. So we thank God today. Yes. We thank him for the rainy weather. Yes, sir. Yes. We thank him for the winds that Thank you, thank you. We thank you for the sun that shines. Yes, sir. For the moon that gives us light at night. Yes. We thank him every morning, every afternoon, every evening, yes, sir. and every day. Oh, yes.
I'm going to read from the contemporary English version, uh, the text of this verse. Again, reading at verse 5. Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. Amen. This passage talks about uh, what it really means to experience God in a new and different way. What it means to begin again. And only God can do that work. Only God can make us into new beings, into new creation. And that's what this passage really talks about. And, and there's a strong connection between what the Lord says through the Apostle Paul here and what happened uh, to the demoniac that we studied about on last week. Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. Amen. So I might need a little bit more time. I think I hear a couple of pages still turning. Read this follow again. I'm reading from the contemporary English verse. If we share in Jesus' death by being baptized, we will be raised to life with him. We know that the persons we used to be were nailed to the cross with Jesus. This was done so that our sinful bodies would no longer be the slaves of sin. We know that sin doesn't have power over our dead body, over dead beings. As surely as we die with Christ, we believe we will also live with him. We know that death no longer has any power over Christ. He died and was raised to life, never again to die. When Christ died, he died for sin once and for all. But now he is alive and he lives only for God. In the same way, you must think of yourselves as dead to the power of sin. But Christ Jesus has given life to you, and you live for God. Don't let sin rule your body. After all, your body is bound to die, so don't obey its desires or let any part of it become a slave of evil. Give yourselves to God as people who have been raised from death to life. Make every part of your body a slave that pleases God. Don't let sin keep ruling your lives. You're ruled by God's kindness and not by the law. So, just briefly want to talk about starting over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, at, at the heart of last week's message was the fact that Jesus wanted to give a man an opportunity to really begin again, to start over. That same message is at the very heart of July 4th for this nation in declaring her independence from England. This country was saying that it wanted to sever its ties from what it was in the past, from control of its former ruler, and establish a new way of living and a new form of government. And again, that same message is the central message about our faith. The truth is, brothers and sisters, whether we're talking about this nation, the man under the control of demons, or you and I, there is no way we can truly start over unless we get rid of our old bad. Y'all know we got a little bit hanging around about what we used to be about, what our claim to fame once was. We have some things that we once were identified by, and sometimes we're tempted to take just a little bit of that over into our new reality, into our new homes. I remember a little bit about a uh, story Dean tells me about our childhood. There was this one family whose houses kept getting burned down, but somehow magically, the sofa that was in their former houses appeared in their new house. Sometimes we so, we so desperately want to bring the things from our past. I think she said that they had a house that burned down by five times. That same sofa with the same spot on That's happened to go over in, into the new house. Sometimes we like to burn down. See, we're ridding ourselves of our past, but the old stuff keeps showing back up. No matter how many times we say we're redefining ourselves, stuff that we used to do, we still are doing it. We, we're still in the habit of, of bringing. 
bring it in and react and respond and say, wait, we can't go into a new life with the same old habits or the same old mentality. The parable actually puts us this way. This way. You can't put new wine, y'all remember this parable, into old wine skin. You know what happens? The, the, the text says, the parable says, if you do, the skins will burst. So the container that you put it in will burst and the wine will run out and both will be useless and ruined. You can't do anything with either one of them because you tried to put something new in something old and that, brothers and sisters, just does not work. Before we can begin again, we have to get rid of what we were. We have to get rid of our old values. Yeah. Verse 5 says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, uh -huh. if we have been united with him in a death like his, when we examine what the Lord Jesus did in dying, we understand that what he did was become sin for us, meaning that he took all of our sins upon him. So everything we were, he became, and then he was crucified. He was put into death in the process of being crucified. He was put into death all of our sins so that they could no longer live within us. They could no longer control us. When he did it for us, he was paying the penalty for us, paying our penalty by crucifying, by becoming us, and then putting to death yeah. every mistake, every problem, everything that we owe. Yes, yes. But then this talks about us being united with him. So the Lord did that for us. Yes. But if we really are going to make it real in our bodies, real in our lives, then we have to experience a similar kind of experience. We have to come to God in a similar way, bring everything that we are and offer it up to him. Yes. Yes. Some people say, but I got some good parts. I have some stuff that really wasn't that bad. And, 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 and I like that part about me. I like I, what I got when I did X, Y, Z. But the Lord wants us to understand that everything that we were is tainted by the corruption of sin and what we used to be. Amen. I should tell this on myself. I don't really believe it, but she tells the story all the time that Deidre, that is, my wife, tells me that she had to change the way that I formed the dress. I'll say, what good? <laughs> I was going to be with her and into this new kind of life that I don't know what she called my former clothes. She told me something, something else. Yeah. Well, 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 well. But, 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 but the way that she explains it to me is that how I used to dress and how I used to carry to exemplify the fact that I was with a beautiful, gorgeous woman. It didn't meet the standards of what I was going into. So if I was going to live this new life, I had to change. I like my old clothes. <laughs> I thought they was all right, but she said if I was going to be with her, I needed to change my habits. Truth, truth. Brothers and sisters, some of us want to keep our Because we enter 
entering a new reality. And that's really what the Lord is trying to get us to understand here. But a lot of us think that when we come to God, we keep doing the same thing we used to do. The first, first part of this verse talks about because of Christ, Christ's grace, what he's given to us, that it's a free gift. Then maybe we ought to keep doing more of the bad stuff that we used to do so that grace can abound. The Lord Jesus says, and it's an extremely strong way to put it. Now, I don't think that's really a good English way that I can, I, I can express it. But it's like, well, in English that I can speak in church. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not just no. It's not just screaming no. But it's like uh, connecting together several no's in a row. Just imagine this in your mind, if you will. If you really want somebody to understand what you meant when you said no, y'all got me, right? <laughs> Yes. 
face and doing nothing but making me mad. Yeah. That's what God invites us into. He invites us into being able to surrender everything that is hindering us, the stuff that we like and is not serving the purposes of benefiting and strengthening our lives. There's no way that we can walk in something that we can experience the newness of God, that we can truly know what it means to be a new person in Christ until we get rid of everything that is old. When we are united with Christ in a death like his, we are also united with him in a resurrection like his. First of all, my brothers and sisters, I need to understand that one of the things that is characteristic of the resurrection of Christ is he was a new person. Y'all remember when people met Jesus originally after the, after the resurrection? Nobody recognized him. People who knew him well, who knew him intimately, were having conversations with him. Y'all remember Mary talking to him? She didn't know who she was talking to. She asked Jesus himself, Jesus, what did you do with Jesus? Of course, she didn't say that. But she was talking to him, what did you do with my master? She did not recognize him. The reason she didn't recognize him is because the resurrection means newness for him. It also means newness for us. You might say that that's a short conversation. I remember the two who were on the road to Emmaus, to Emmaus with them that were going from one town to another. They had a whole conversation about all the events that had transpired, about everything that had happened to Jesus. And the only time that they recognized him was when he opened their eyes by saying something that struck them just right, that sounded familiar with them. The first characteristic of, of us being new in Christ is people will not recognize who we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do some things that will baffle their minds and they'll say, no, you did not used to react like this. I knew how to, how to get your goat. I knew how to push your buttons. They just don't push anymore. <laughs> and Christ means that we change up what we used to be in order to become somebody different. Some of the disciples had to touch Jesus' wounds to truly recognize him. Jesus' resurrection is a new beginning for us and a new beginning in us. It is a complete disconnect from all that was so that we can become, as 2 Corinthians 5, 17 puts it. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. Think about that. You, what uniting with Christ means, and what that expresses. That you, what uniting with Christ means. It means that a new creation has come to us, yeah. not just in us, but to us. Yeah. There's more than a pardoning from sin, from crimes against God. There is a crucifixion of who we once were, because our former person owed a debt. Who we 
once were. But Christ's resurrection means that he no longer, that we no longer rather operate by the rules of our history as Christ no longer, once he was resurrected, operated by the rules of the world. Yeah. You know, Jesus, after he, he was risen from the dead, could walk through walls. Before he died, he was just like you and I, and had he walked into a wall, he would have bumped his head and a knot would have come off. Right? Get to some stuff that 
you got some ways that maybe wasn't quite all together honest. Tastes sound good when you taste it a little bit, right? I mean, tell the truth. But the good is tainted. Because you know you didn't get it the right way. Amen? You know it wasn't all the way saved. I'm, I'm going to try to make this, uh, make this as saved as possible in this expression. When you live in Connecticut, uh, there was this minister who came and, and preached to us. And he said, everything we do, we ought to be able to thank God for it before we ever experience. Yes, yeah. That's what in Christ is really all about. Is that everything he brings to us, he brings to us for our pleasure, and we can give him glory for it before it ever comes. We, we don't go into it saying, God, forgive me for what I'm about to do. We go into it saying, God, I give you glory for all that you put before me. Amen. Freedom is an independence. It is a gifting that only God can bring into our lives yes. that we owe it to ourselves to discover just how good it is. Yes, it is. Some of us are trying to go back and do all of the things that we knew, know we used to enjoy. But what God wants us to do is to give ourselves an opportunity to have new experiences yes. that are far better than anything that we've ever known. Amen. That's really what God wants from us. Yes. To show us that there's something better for everyone. One final story, and then uh, I am uh, going to do the invitation. There was a young lady that I grew up with uh, all through my elementary school. Uh -huh. And we thought that she was the worst person ever to, is it, to live. I mean, we did. We called her stinky. She never seen the comb my hair. None, none of that other The clothes that she wore, we wondered where she got them from and all of that other kind of stuff. We thought bad about our family. I mean, we just talked about it. Nobody wanted to be close to us. One summer after she came back from school, everybody was wondering who the new young lady was. Everybody was just looking. And who is that? That can't be named. That can't be Because it seemed like she never took a bath. She didn't come out. Her hair was all long and beautiful down her back. She had a different walk about herself and everything else. And it wasn't an isolating experience. From that moment on, you could not tell the difference between who she was. I mean, you could not believe that who she was was who she had become. Mm -hmm. yeah. She made a completely different change. It was, it was more than what some women call the ugly dozen symptoms. Yeah. It was far more than that. It was complete transformation from what she was to the new person that she had become. There was nothing that was the same. That's what God wants us to see. That's what God wants us to know. Before that, not one young man would ever look her way. After that, everybody. <laughs> everybody was trying to see, you know, can I possibly get the phone number? But somebody else already had it because they saw what she was becoming before she ever became. That's really the picture that God wants you and I to be. Yeah, yeah. I understand that when we unite with him, we are genuinely, authentically new people in his sight.